I'm glad it's night. So the light from the sun would not burn me on my bum when I shoot the moon. Uh, Hill's got it. Tribute to the ground like with a pulverizing tackle from Ambrose. Oh, I think the bombers are going to go over with it here. Bombers and one. Welcome to the Windy Hill Insock with me, The Solution, and joining me today is Fiona. Good evening. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, same old for me. So just another normal Thursday night. Workers work tomorrow just as per, unlike you and the majority of people. Yeah, sorry about that. Are we thinking of you when I'm doing nothing? Yeah, I'm sure you will be. <laughs> I won't give you. But... Uh, been a big week. So, so Fiona's oh. forecast, I should say, round three. And look, I'm not going to go into the whole Peter Wright thing and the Sydney thing. I think we did it to death. I will just say, I have to commend you and the other guys as well, but you in particular, your rant, your opening rant about Sydney and that little shit was so therapeutic for me. I, just, I listened to it. I think three or four times, it's all I needed. It's all I needed. It was exactly how I felt, and you just emphasised every point and just emphatically summed up, I think, how everyone was really feeling towards them as a whole and individually. So thank you for that. I thank you from the bottom of my heart. <laughs> no, no worries. I mean, it is kind of our wheelhouse providing therapy in times of um, times of trouble. Uh and, yeah, so then we had the Peter Wright thing. Look, all I say is I'm just disappointed. And, and and the one thing I will say, I don't swallow the line that was kind of peddled by the club. Oh, we're lucky you didn't get you didn't get six or, six or more weeks. Aren't we lucky we got four? I, I understood pleading guilty. I didn't understand some of the points made. And I think we over-finessed and maybe... Uh, yeah, we're just trying to be a little bit too cute, in my opinion. But uh, have you got anything to say on that? I just feel sorry for Peter, to be honest. Look, I will say, and I've and I've alluded to on this podcast before, uh, I have a a rating, and aside from Hep, it's an informed rating system. And aside from Heppel, and you could probably put Andy McGrath in that, but aside from Heppel, Peter Wright is the most is the kindest, most humblest person at the club, individual at the club, and. There was absolutely zero malice in any of what he did, and this could not be happening just to a, to a, just a, such a kind heart. Aside from Hep, obviously, to a more kind hearted person, and and from the caring and just the individual point of view, I'm gutted for him because I just he would he would have just been feeling sick, and we all saw it, you know, that he was clearly distraught. But mm. just as a person, as a human, is he, just such a good one. And it's just, yeah, I hate that it's happening to him. And from a team's perspective, that four weeks of chemistry that could have been building, that we were already seeing kind of in two weeks blossom, and that's four weeks less of chemistry that that forward group is going to build. And it just it just sucks big balls. That's all I'll say. And I, I agree yeah. with you. I think, I think our defence was poor. I, I think it was... Pathetic, actually, to be quite honest. I mean, oh, he had surgery on his shoulder last year, so he braced. Okay, well, I, I know we didn't hear the entire defence, but why not harp on his character, on his on his good good um, history? I don't know. I'm no lawyer, so maybe this is a... I mean, yeah, or just, I, I mean, just point to the facts facts of what happened and, and that, shows yeah. the video. The video shows it really clearly. Had his eyes on the ball, guy r runs into his path at the last human instinct to break. Yeah, bra braces. Biology. But, yeah, anyway. but now, now we've done what we said we wouldn't do, which is analysed it. Uh, yeah, okay, well, that was a quick... i tell you what, before seconds. we get to all our segments, so we've got the chit cha changes, sitting Joe, smoking Joe. We've got a couch question as well. Peter Wright... He was massive news on Tuesday. He was out of the news oh. <laughs> for the events for once. of the last couple of days. <laughs> for once. My God, oh. what a mess. Do you want to describe it for anybody who's been living under a rock? I mean, I, for one, was not shocked in the slightest. Absolutely not shocked. Absolutely. So, so can basically, you, can you explain? In, a, in a nutshell, 
everyone's yeah. aware of yeah. the drug policy. That's WADA. Yeah. Now, the WADA, that is that involves and includes illicit, uh, sorry, performance-enhancing drugs. Performance-enhancing, so which can, under, include, can include some illicit substances which are considered performance-enhancing. It can, but the main yeah. illicit ones we are going to be talking about, it does not. So cocaine, as an example. Uh, so the, the players comply with sh- random strategic drug testing uh, during season and off-season under the WADA mm. code through the AFL. Now, what people did not know is that the AFL have their own policy and they've created a policy that's been in for two decades, apparently. It's been in place for two decades. And basically it allows, I think it has been anyway, I could be wrong on that, I don't know that number specifically, but um, anyway, that policy allows a player to, under the guise of mental health, to self-report now, I, I, I came on some new news. I came on some new details on this. Apparently, that is also um, random. Apparently, the doctors actually randomly test the players as well under this policy. But you can also go to a doctor yourself if you feel like you're going to... So, for example, Joel Smith from Melbourne, had he, instead of playing, had he just said to his doctor on the Thursday look, I've taken something, I think it's in my system, they would have just put on the team sheet, Joel Smith had me out for a week. And he would, all of this would be, we wouldn't even know his name. So this policy that the AFL have created allows a player to self-report anonymously. The only person who knows is the doctor. The doctor is under oath, confidentiality, patient doctor confidentiality to not, disclose that and to and to put it under the guise of a of a to lie to players to lie to lie to fans and to coaches about a medical issue yeah because i i'm pretty sure everyone knew about the afl's kind of illicit drugs policy in general because it's been roundly criticized and the whole i think it was virtue virtue signaling Initially. So what part of this is shocking so, people then? What's so, where's well, the... Well, 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 you've, you've, you definitely look, like so. We we all knew that the AFL had its own three strikes you're out policy. That's not saying that's not any that that's not part of any international framework. It's not part of WADA. But it's, that's not this policy either. Well, well, I think it's related to this. So so we have this illicit policy that's supposed to be the, the AFL have basically said, I guess like some organizations can do like any mining company will will do or logistics or an airline they can test people on the job and you could have um marijuana in your system for example and you can get sacked on the spot so organizations can do this um i think the afl decided to have this policy again to try and look good and show that it's proactive and we know it likes to be the savior of the world I think everyone understood that. We understood the three strikes. We knew it was kind of a little bit dodgy. Like, mm. no players. There's been really. one, one in 20 years, yeah. I think. That's right. 18, one in 18 years. Yeah. One, one the same time. Was it? Yeah. 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 Well, you, but you hit on the nail on the head. What we nobody had any idea about was that <laughs> they would, or clubs would lie about a player being injured. Which compromises the competition. Completely. Compromises. Completely. How think how many strategies. Think, think how many strategies and things are put into place and work that is done on, on, on an opposition team when a, when a list comes out or when the when the um list drops. Like, and what what fucking shits me? What I take umbrage to in this the most is that mm-hmm. the AFL have created this policy that is so easy to take advantage of that it's actually ignoring the whole point of it, which is to actually get and help the players who are actually on drugs for mental health. Instead, it's the players who are just having a having a bit of a line on an off week that are able to take advantage of this actual policy instead of the ones who are doing it to get through something and to get help and to avoid the media scrutiny. Because apparently there has there have been, and Gary Lyon reported on it this, this afternoon or this morning, saying there have been a doctor was interviewed and said that there's a Hall of Famer who 
went to his doctor, went through the process, was going through a hard time, self-reported, was put down as had a hammy, was out for a couple of weeks and then, bang, turned his life around. But I would suggest in, an, in, the, in the similar vein, there's over 100 who have, who have they're saying, or, you know, yeah. allegedly over 100 who have done Competition-wide, sanctioned by the ASL apparently, and the big difference between, like, the airline or the logistics company or, you know, um, the mining company is you get sacked. Yeah. <laughs> you don't just get yeah. a day off. Yeah. Wow, and what still a get life. paid and get to come what back the following week. Life. What a life. No, 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 nothing happens to them legally. If you no. get caught at a club or and you get drug tested on the side of the road, see you later. But nah, this is fine. I'll just go to my doctor on a Thursday, pretend I'm a bit iffy in the head. Bang, no problem. Coach doesn't know. Coach knows no different. Thinks I've done a hammy. What a life. Yeah, but That's do you what really I mean. Believe that? Do you believe that bit? I don't, I don't know that I believe that bit. I don't believe, I believe that coaches, I, re, I believe be, that doctors pretty, and coaches have such, yeah, yeah, I reckon they have such close-knit relationships. Like, I reckon I'm pretty close to you. I know when you're lying. Like, are you telling me a coach oh, that's really? worked with a doctor, yeah. that's worked with, with a doctor for 20 years, doesn't know, can't tell if he's lying about a certain player? I don't think so. No, and I don't think it, I, don't, I wouldn't think they even try and lie. But the one thing I'll also say, it's been a big week for trolls. <laughs> I've had, I've been getting so much heat Have you? on Twitter, Sydney supporters. What, they um, listen to the pod? They listen to your little nah, rant? It was, <laughs> yeah, possibly. Imagine possibly. if I had. <laughs> well, um, some of them have seemed to be taking careful note of what I'm posting, so maybe they they are listening because there's there's lots of lots of activity. Uh-huh. But then, just flippantly, I sent out a a tweet on Wednesday when the story broke and said. Some, paraphrasing, but has anybody got receipts on Melbourne supporters calling us um, drug cheats? And, that's, and the that's Melbourne like supporters... So that is so uh, tame. <laughs> exactly. God, it's super tame. They've been coming at me, and the theme has kind of been, particularly the last couple of days, well, fuck you, you are drug treats, cheats, but this is competition-wide. This is not particular to Melbourne. This is competition-wide. But that's kind of proving my point. The whole actual point of the tweet really is you probably shouldn't be talking about other clubs unless you're completely sure that your house is in order, unless you're completely squeaky clean and you're not in a glass house yourself, then maybe throw a stone over the fence. But that was kind of my point is that I think when it comes to these matters, just like supplements, because we know that some of those guys have been at Melbourne. Um, mm. Dank had been at Melbourne. Uh, just like this, this became an excellent problem um, and the rest of the clubs just kind of forgot about their supplement regimes. Yeah. Then it looked like that might happen to Melbourne as well, but now it's quite clear it's organisation-wide. I just think it's an absolute mess. And it's it, a it'll, disgrace. It'll test the resolve of journalists Let's we'll, we'll find out who's really a journalist and who's just a paid member of AFL marketing over the yeah. course of the next couple of weeks. It's a good point. It's a really good point. I mean, if there's anybody not outraged by this, that's your first clue. Like everybody should be disgusted by this. It's giving it's giving players reign to take advantage of a of a system that's so flawed and to just take the Mickey out of the competition. The supporters, the uh, it's ridiculous to be quite frank. Well, as Mother Teresa, aka Jared Whaley, said, anything yet? Don't know. I try and make my, my make it my mission not to listen to what that dickhead has to say. I'll be very surprised if he goes hard on this. Nah, of course not. Like he has with other issues. Yeah, of course but not. anyway, uh, it, it was good. It, it took us off the front page. <laughs> oh. It was, I think it was a gift from the universe to Peter Wright. Yeah. <laughs> to just give him yeah. a break, the poor guy. After slapping him down. That's right. Back up again. That's right. All right. So the ch 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 changes. Eh, where are we? So 
to me, nothing surprising about the ins. Redmond, Parrish, mm-hmm. and Kelly. Mm-hmm. Uh, good to see uh, Darcy back in particular. Having, <laughs> having not, yeah, well. Cried Wolf last week. <laughs> no, look, I think he'll be back. And yeah. um, we, we miss him. I miss it, Sardis. Oh, I'm not surprised. Um, That's I the Parrish think... effect. It's as simple as that. That's yeah, the Parrish yeah. effect. And personally, oh, you know. I prefer him. I prefer... I, I give Hodds the knob ahead. If it's Hodds versus Sardis, who you drop, then I, I'm dropping Sardis. Not to say yeah, that you know, I haven't been impressed with him, but he'll get his That's goal. right. He'll extremely young. Season. Extremely young. He'll get pl- plenty of football. Uh, Peter Wright suspended and Alwyn Davy Jr. omitted. I guess not a surprise, really, although before I throw to you, I'd say Jai Menz, he's a bit lucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'd say uh, probably Dersma might be a little lucky as well. Uh, and that may be any kind as well. What, what do you think? Um, I think, yeah, Menz is a good one, although he did lay two very good tackles in the Sydney game, but that was probably all he did, and so he's going to want to have to lift his game. Mm. So he's he's very lucky, especially because Davey had such an impact in the 10 minutes that he played. Um, that could have easily been a switch, to be quite frank. Um, so you'd, you'd, what, you'd think this is Menz's last kind of chance to give it a real imp- have some real impact and then you mm. consider switching with Davey. Uh, Hind, I'm willing to give another week to find his feet. I know he makes everyone nervous, but I'm going to back him. He makes uh, himself nervous. Yeah, he does. Yeah, that's why I'm willing to give him a week to settle. Um, and I think he'll have a bit more fun um, come Saturday. And Dersma saw some bit, much better signs last week, personally. He, he he directly impacted multiple goals, in my opinion. In fact, set two up beautifully, just with pressure and work rate. So, um, Did you see that on the replay? Yes. Yeah, okay. I did. I'll, defer. I'll defer to you then because yeah. this, you do notice things on the replay that you don't. Well, the go- a, couple of the, yeah, a couple of the goals were, were like, I, I noticed it was him in real time. But, um, yes, you, you take a bit more note on replay. And I'm not surprised. I thought I, I just I knew all week that um, I'm getting very good at reading Mr. B. Scott, and you just knew that there was going to be no Jones and no Caddy. You just knew that they'd been setting Draper up to play a bit more forward all all, all off season. So um, I think he'll just spend a bit more time forward, and 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 particularly the opposition's probably coming to it a bit. We're not. I don't think we'll be super stretched for height with the um with the Saints' defence. In fact. They've got other mm. s- skills up their sleeve, defence-wise and attacking-wise, so they don't necessarily rely on heights too much. They've probably got a lot of run that we need to shut down. A lot imagine. of, lot of, um, lot of run from their back line. A lot of weapons in their back line. If we thought, look, I'm, I'm willing to say, you know how I said, if I said last week in the forecast that if we play mm. how we played against Hawthorne, there's no way we'd beat Sydney. You know how I said that? Mm. So I'm willing to say that this week, if we play how we played last week, we can we will win. Because I reckon how we played last week, I'm willing to say that that beats most teams. Interesting. What about the transition goals? That Despite, was the tra- about yeah. Despite the transition stuff, I reckon how we performed last week. Of course, we have to tidy that up. Don't get me wrong. But I reckon there was a... That was just a super, super red hot opposition. Personally, they were on they were on turnover like a. I don't oh. think it's going to be as as crystal cut for most opposition. Yeah, they're, they're the form team of the competition at the moment. As I said in the podcast, it is only round three. Yes, you're right. Or 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 two or, two, or whatever it is. But well, who fucking knows? Very very early. Uh, yes, and they do. I was going to say, speaking of um, lack of height, Max King suspended. Universe so, taking, taking care of us there, one for one. <laughs> yeah, we'll see what happens next week. We need someone to get suspended. Yeah. Who do we play? play next week again? We're away, aren't we? Port, isn't it? 
Yeah, I think so. Uh, okay, we need someone to get suspended for that. Um, right, so the other two changes, who do you think will be the sub? If you had to bet, and uh, maybe Hind, they might try Hind as a sub, have some impact when he gets on. We reckon maybe Men- Menzi as well could be. But if you put Menzi as sub, that's a very slow, big forward line. Then very slow and big. Well, he's on the bench. It's already. Don't take any notice of that. They don't. I don't even look at that. With on the team sheet, it makes no difference. Uh, I just think it's, it's, it looks already a very slow, big, tall forward line to me. Yeah. Well, so who's who have we got? We got Grisha. I think Hind. I think Hind will be sub. Okay. Unless they put Cox, but I, I don't think you want to move Cox. I think you want to continue give him some continuity, given that mm. he's he's played pretty well. I don't know. I mean. If Menzi plays like he did last week, he'll be a liability. But mm. maybe kick up the pants is what he needs. Uh, we shall see. All right, so you're going to do the smoking, Joe. Yep. And I'm doing the sitting. Who have you got? Who's going to bob up and be like smoking Joe Missy and just star? I'm going to go... I'm gonna go with Dersma, seeing as you put the heat on him. I'm gonna I'm gonna back him to have run the cobwebs out because that's my biggest criticism with him: fumbling. Every time he touches it, fumbling. Yep. yep. That's but everything else, he's ticking all the other boxes for me. It's just mm-hmm. a bit, just got a bit of the butter hands. Maybe that's a bit of settling into the new system, new team. A bit nervous. You've got to prove yourself. So I'm gonna back him to find some to find some cement. Is that the same? What am I trying to say? Cement hands. <laughs> Find some cement. I, don't know. <laughs> I think I've just made that saying off. Depends. Anyway. Will it be, if it's, if it's wet, drying cement, it'll be sticky. <laughs> no. But if it's hard cement that's already dried, then it'll just bounce off. So it depends on the so cement. This analogy probably. doesn't work, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Okay. Uh, I've seen My- some players that have, have run like they've had cement shoes. No, we don't want that. Oh, but I, he's my no. pick. Easy peak. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, I'm going to say... Uh, oh, I'm doing sitting, yeah. But you know who my nomination would have been for smoking? Uh, who? Would have been Langford, because it would be the complete focal point now. Um, with, with ride out. Yeah. It's going to have to step but, up. And we know yeah. he does, and we know he will. Right. Who am I going to pot? I don't want to, but it's what I think. Well, go on. Since when have you shied away from saying what you think? Because it's he's, he's that one guy you mentioned, who's number one to Peter Wright's number two, best bloke at the club. Oh no! I, I think it's, I think it's a day just because of the Saints run. And pace, and they do. They do have that Ross Lyon style pressure. I just think it's a day where Hep might get exposed a little bit. But the run's coming out of the other side. Yeah, but they also they chase and tackle, and they have got some good small forwards. And they do have a um. You know, yeah, I'm I'm, re- I'm quite worried about Higgins. I reckon he's had a brilliant start to the year. His first two games, I've watched both, and um. I did like your comment <laughs> in the in the podcast. Oh, if the Saints bring, are they bringing the four umpires? <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, the Collingwood umpires. Oh, we're fucked. <laughs> if they B-Y-O do, umps, man. Pay, all you do is pay a bit of corkage and you get all the free kicks. It's great. Wow. we're really we're screwed six ways to six ways to hell if we if we have if they have those umpires. That's for fucking sure. That was unbelievable. Um, but no, they have – the thing about St Kilda this year so far, and it's a small sample size, is, you know, when you think of Ross Lyon, you think ultra-defensive. But I reckon they've got – That's right. I reckon they've got layers. I reckon they can snap into – like, if they have to be offensive, they can be. But if they've got a lockdown, I reckon they can do that too. That's why they're a bit of a bogey, 
I reckon, yeah, can't sleep on them. They've got they run from half back, half forward, I should say, out of our back line, our forward line, sorry, um, which will be he's going to, someone's going to have to hold him accountable or he's going to mark everything all night, mm. all day, all afternoon. I just hate seeing a guy with Wanganin in his name too, starring at another club. Oh, he's been brilliant. Yeah, it's painful, hey. He's been very, very mm. good. Very, very good. But they're, they're my, I reckon, I reckon they're my danger. Maybe that can be a new segment. My danger opposition players for this week are Higgins and Wilkie. Um, yeah, I think, I don't know who's going to play on. Maybe King Cal can play on Higgins or maybe Butler. Mm. Uh, and Wilkie, someone's just going to have to make him accountable, whether that's Stringer. See, that's a good role for Guelphy. That's a great Guelphy role. Yeah, yeah. Because he, he just do to him what he did to Sicily. Yeah, he takes those marks in defence, he mops up. Well, he just makes them accountable, whereas yeah. he'll probably just roam now. Yeah. So, yeah, they're going to be tough. They're going to be tough to beat, but I am adamant if we play how we played last week with – it's a very simplified way of looking at it. You know how the architect said that they never zoom in. If they zoomed out, I could see where some s players were. Yeah. Well, what if our players just pushed up? We just got more players to the contest. What if it's as simple as that whilst they're learning the instinctual bang off the mark and into transition? Mm. Because to me, it looked like Sydney just had that second, that, that flick of gut instinct to just switch into attack mode from stoppages, whereas we were half a second behind. So what if whilst they're learning that, we just push more players to the contest? Now this could be that could be a very simplified view, and it might not work. But mm. a few times, especially watching the replay, I'm thinking if we just had more players at this contest and pressured yeah. the ball carrier, well, that's going to create some pressure, another ball up, a potential win. I don't know. Is that too simple? I like your theory. I like your theory. I hope you're right. There's got to be a reason they're not doing that, right? <sighs> yeah. Well, I mean, we had this debate last week, just like we did the week before. I just worry we don't have enough run in our legs in the team. So why yeah, not push not, players to contest? So why not just push play more players to the contest and save them having to run? Instead, instead put it on the owners to win the ball back in the contest. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they're getting to the contest. You're talking about stoppages, are you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Excuse me. Um. Yeah. It's, oh, you're saying they're not even making it. That's why they're not even coming into screen. Yeah, they're not even time, making it. Yeah, I just, I just reckon, particularly like that third and last quarter, like I think well, there was a couple of, couple of like three on ones, four on ones. We're not talking transition now again, but but that's because I, they're not, yeah. they haven't clicked into attack mode, and they're still, their minds are still. That's what it felt like to me. They hadn't actually clicked into attack mode to chase the player with the ball or to use the ball to run to run away. So whilst they're learning that instinct, why not just get more players to the contest and stop the ball from getting out? I know. There's got to be a reason why it's not happening, and mm. I'm sure somebody will tell me in a very mean way. But Oh, the experts out there. Yeah. Yeah, and no, I'd say to them, their coaching staff haven't worked it out. So yeah. what makes them so, so smart? That feels it feels like it feels too obvious of a solution to be something the coaches haven't thought about. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. I still see I look at our team. Okay, let me ask you if these guys are I'll go through the team. Mm. Tell me if they're two way runners. Now some of them I'll start from the full back line. They don't need to be two way runners necessarily. No, don't even don't you probably don't even have to go through the back line. Hep all no. Mackay, no. Hind, yes. Should be a two-way runner. Nick I Martin, think he yes. Is. I think he is, but I think he lacks capability above the shoulders, yeah. Which, where, Nick Martin? No, Hind. I think he does. He does two-way run. I just think sometimes he doesn't know when or why or how or where. That's Martin? Yes. Oh, Done. 
from about it? on on current on current evidence, twenty twenty four evidence. No, but that's harsh because he's learning a new role. I don't think it's harsh. I think it's truth, and I think this guy doesn't two way run either, and he should Redmond. Oh, he's the biggest. He's the biggest um, offender of them all, I reckon. Mm. But the worst thing is, is when he's going to be when he's forced to match up on an opponent. I almost wonder whether this week, maybe Scott just says you're doing a job this week. Your oh, you dropped. Like it has to be yeah. that. It yeah. fucking has to be yeah. that. Why does he get away with just not? He's on the big money. Yeah, well, Brad Scott, you promised. You promised. Anyway, this this will take too long. I won't go through the, the entire team, but I think there's a lot of guys there that, yeah, possibly don't run both ways when they should. And I think some guys are just different type of players. Set of field just stringer, getting, they're Langford. They're getting caught out. I just think they're getting caught out. As to, I don't even, they look like they don't know what to do. Like in some of the replays, mm. the Sydney players were just, you, you blinked. It was half a blink and they were off on yeah. transition. Our yeah. players yeah. were in no man's land. So that tells elite. me, that tells me, and it's, I don't think it's about pace or fitness. I, or, I honestly think, or intent. That's why I think, I just honestly think their gut, th- their, their instinct is not clicking into gear fast enough. Mm-hmm. Let's see how they go this week. All right. Sorry, Hep. I'll tell you what I thought about Nick Martin too, by the way. Yeah. But he's probably still got some. He, he needs a good game this week. He does. Maybe you, should have, maybe you should have done it just so it can reverse mods. But anyway, you've announced Hep yet. Uh, all right. So, did we just settle? Do we go to the game first or the couch? We go to the game first, don't we? All right. What's your prediction? I think we'll win by 17. So just three, three-ish goals, I would say. Could be less, but I'm going to stay 17. 17? Probably not more. Probably not more. Yeah. Um, I do not. I, I do just do not want to see Wilkie taking uncontested marks and dropping off. I just. I don't want to see Stringer calling for cheapies. I want him to be making Wilkie accountable, or someone. He's going to be. He's gonna, not going to be accountable. Is my prediction. <laughs> um, I, I can. I can cop a few transition. You know. Oopsie daisies, but I just will not cop getting beaten by what you know. And that is that Wilkie yeah. is in great form, all Australian. He is doing he's doing this Tom Stewart role. You don't get beaten by what you absolutely know. And we did it against the Hawks. We ticked that off, you shut Sicily down and you shut the back line down. So hmm. it needs to be done again. And maybe that's Hobbs, I guess, as the de facto Guelphy. No. <laughs> no. no. Maybe they give be? maybe they give Menzi that role. That's a good role to give mm-hmm. Menzi to say to hope he watched Guelphy's tapes or someone better in a better team. Tapes. Uh, yeah, the, the conversation might be, hey Menzi, see how you, you got like no possessions last week? Just do that to your opponent. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just infect your opponent with your skill set, and we'll be right. Look, it's a hard position to play. We know that small forward. And he did have a very good rundown tackle, spying, chilling rundown tackle. But that's got to be tri- tripled. He needs to do that th- three times a game. Yeah. Well, I feel I, – I, I love your confidence, but I think we'll lose. You said 17, didn't you? Mm-hmm. We're going to lose by 17. I knew you were going to say that. Because I, I know you to. so well, I can tell you. I can tell. I can read <laughs> can you like you really? a book. Yes, hundred percent, I can. Yeah, I. Don't. I think St Kilda are like, they're a great early season team as well. Happened last year, 
it's kind of the Ross Lyon way. Having a lot with Fremantle, they're very good early. People get sick of his droning, whiny, boring voice. Creepy. And there's that too. <laughs> uh, but I haven't heard anything from any of the end of season functions last year, so we assume it was all okay. <laughs> well, but you don't yeah. hear a lot of off-season stuff. Tell you what. No, that's yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, I just think they're up and about. They're confident. I'm and looking forward to getting them at Marvel. I want to see how we differ because, we, as we know, we played them at the G last year for their mm. 150th or 100th, whatever it was. I'm looking forward to yeah, getting them one, at Marvel. Yeah, with their one fucking premiership. Yeah. That was embarrassing. Anyway, you can only celebrate what you got. That's true. That's true. As we did with, you know, 84, 85, or 85, 86. What was it? I don't know. I wasn't born. 84. So. 84. Yeah. It was the 84 team, I think. Um, but, uh, yeah, I want to see the Marvel, Marvel, Marvel effect. They play well at Marvel, though. That's they do. <laughs> but I want to see the difference. <laughs> I just want to see the difference. From last all year. I can say, all I just can't get this out, this thought out of my head. St Kilda run and they run and they run yeah, and they, they retain the ball and they'll just like well, with the with the transition with the worst transition team in the it's league. Like my, oh, the Brad team, Scott, just, just don't allow the transition. Push players, push players to the contest. Yeah, uh, and don't so, and, and and but. And then let, don't let the defenders get so high up the ground because you know what they you know what Higgins love more Higgins loves more than anything and out the back goal loves yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, of I could, can, yeah. can you, can, I'm going to paint you a picture. Can you just see the ball flying over Ben Mackay's head and who's, who's waiting times. at the back there? Who's waiting multiple at the back? Times. Yeah, 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 multiple times. That's what worries me. That's what running into loves. open goals. Loves it. So why are they instructing Ben Mackay and Co to push so far high up the ground? I reckon with Kelly and Redman, I don't reckon we'll see that. I reckon it's the Redman Kelly effect with them back. I don't think we'll see them pushing that high up the ground. Mm. Can I ask you a question? If Peter Wright was playing, would you be tipping a win? Yeah, potentially. If we took the team, if we took the team that we took to Sydney. The thing about Peter Wright is, like, anywhere in or near the 50, and I'm backing him for a goal, like, we don't – it's it's such a weapon, such a weapon. We saw it last week. Like, yeah. like we were so efficient. We were efficient the week before. And uh, he was looking better and better too because we know how much footy he missed last week. Um, last year. Last year, I beg your pardon. So – This is yeah. my thing about the transition shit, like – we did so much wrong. If on if on a sheet you put all your faults, and if you're ticking five out of six, but that sixth one is just your, it's the crux of all your faults. The Achilles heel. Yeah. The Achilles heel. How are we not like I'm looking at last week, and I'm I did not feel that gut wrenching feeling the next day, aside from the two meter Peter thing. I was up and about. I never watch replays of the loss. <laughs> Never. I mean, we all know that I, I absolutely take to church when we win the replays. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but Unhealthily loss, amount it, of times. Uh, correct. Self, I'm self-admitting that. That, but, but I was buoyant. We were, we were efficient. I, I loved the, the forward, the lowering of the eyes more into the forward line. I loved the, the, um, the contested footy. We were doing so much better, and I, I don't know, but the positives stood out more than that. Of course, we were mm. ab- abysmal in the transitions, um, but I don't know if you've got. I, I saw that Brad Scott's got his list of things he wants to fix, and he's fixed one, two, three, and s- four and six. But number five is just is eluding him at the moment because to fix one, two, three, four, and six, five had to take the back seat a bit. So I don't know. Yeah. I was bo- really buoyed by last week. But if they drop off in any of that contested footy, in any of that aggression, if they get gun shy because the media's taken us to oh, yeah, the fucking hell yeah. and back this week, if they get gun shy on this Essen and fucking edge thing, I'm gonna I'm gonna blow my shit. They've got to keep that a, aggression. That's a really good point, Fiona, and that's a great like wild card. I can imagine the umpire's been right on it. As well. Oh God! I didn't suddenly, because we, we, we are. We, what, what are we? We've been for the last 
11, 12 years now with a naughty kid in class. And even when another kid on the other side of the room throws a, a duster at the, at the whiteboard, we're blamed. We're oh, always in trouble. I'm getting pre annoyed. We, we, you know who we are? We're little jo- in, in those in those jokes. We're little Johnny. That's who we are in all the jokes about school. We're little Johnny. Excuse me, straight. Um, and you know, any little niggle, they're going to be calling us, aren't they? Yeah, 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 yeah. Any little jumper hold yeah. that looks like it's a bit of a melee, they're going to just call us. Oh god. The only counterpoint might be the Saints were so favoured last week. The umpires might think, well, we need to make sure we're not so biased this week, potentially. Because it was talked about and, yeah. Correct. Because it's all about optics. It's all about optics. Absolutely. I'm going to go right. with that. I'm going to go with that. Well, I, I hope you're right. And I hope you're right more broadly in that we win. Ready yeah, for a Cats hope... question? Yeah, okay. Let's go. Uh, okay. Just for you listeners, Fiona's couch. This, these are non-football. They can questions. be football, though. They can be. They can. Be. Yeah, yeah. But, but but people people come to Fiona. She's kind of like you remember the Oracle from uh, the Matrix movies. She's kind of like the Oracle. She'll she sits there and. Um, I'm at your sleuth. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it gives wisdom that people have found very helpful. So this question is: I have some embarrassing. Annoying habits, and it makes Time. me feel like, <laughs> and it makes me feel like oh, this is new, is it? It makes me feel like I'll be alone forever. Oh, what do I do? Oh, uh, well, you probably will be alone with that attitude. Stop it! No, actually, no. The fact that you're actually saying it and verbalising it and putting it out there—that's the reason you won't be alone forever. It's the people who are in denial that they have any bad habits and that they're perfect and they they don't have anything to work on. You have hope, my friend. You have hope because guess what? We all have bad habits. We all have embarrassing habits. But it's 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 actually being self a bit self aware that's gonna motivate you to perhaps work on those things or just accept them in yourself, in you. Because guess what? In on in society it's we see the highlight reel of everybody on social media. We don't mm. see their annoying habits and embarrassing traits, but we're all got them. We all have yeah, them. Yeah. And, it, and it's just about finding your person who has those, whose embarrassing traits fit your embarrassing traits. No one's ever looked at an Instagram photo and smelt a fart. That's right. So having said that, let me ask you a question. You meet the perfect guy. Mm-hmm. Good looking you know, great personality. He's an excellent supporter, of course. That doesn't, that doesn't sound right. It's the good-looking <laughs> ones that usually don't have the good personalities. But anyway, he's got he's got it all. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What habits would be a deal breaker for you? These are habits that he can't change. So let let me go through a few, and you can. Okay. He picks his nose. No, nah, not a deal breaker. Not a deal breaker. No. Nah. Uh, he eats it. <laughs> oh God! Oh, that's a deal breaker. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> do, it depends how often is this? A, is this a that habit? wasn't hard? That wasn't is hard. A, you, that's, you, that's you, just you walk into the lounge room and he's up to his elbow in his <laughs> in, his, in his nostril. <laughs> if if I saw it once, I'd be like, I'd, I'd be like, if you do that again and I see it. This is over. I'm out of here. Because okay. that's just unhygienic. That just comes down to being like clean and not gross. And germs. That's what I think. Germs. Ill. Cigarette smoker. Oh no, I'm an absolute no to smoking. Like, cannot be a social smoker. Cannot. I'm a chronic asthmatic. So if I walk past someone who's just had a smoke, they're not even smoking, but they've just had a smoke, mm. I start wheezing. I've got to take six puffs of Ventolin. I'm on. I'm on steroids for the rest of my life, like morning okay. and night. Yeah, I, I, for my health, like I would die. I think I would actually be buried if I, I couldn't. I couldn't be with a smoker. I also find it disgusting. So no. What if, what if he or she vapes? Oh God, no, nah, gross. 
<laughs> we fight them. This is pretty easy. Um, oh, so, but those are, those are deal breakers. Yeah. Oh no, that they're easy things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what about he is a rabid Carlson supporter? I mean, and do you know what? <laughs> he he hates Essendon and says so. Ooh. Okay, that changes the dice a little bit. Oh, yeah, that would be really tough, and I'd have to, he'd have to be open to not verbally assaulting Essendon in any way, mm -hmm. or else I wouldn't be able to. You can support who you want, because as we've ascertained, you can't choose who you support. You, it's in your blood, you grow up with it. So, not really his fault. However, it is his fault and his responsibility if he's verbally attacking the, the family I love. So, excuse me, how did this become a, a what I, I pros and cons of who I date of my dating life? Oh, back to the couch. No, no. It, well, it basically because you you sort of said, um, no, there's no there's no habits that should stop you from dating. I just thought, well, I'll scratch the surface and we'll see if that's. Uh, that's a problem. My There's advice. No habits, those habits, those habits shouldn't stop those people from dating. They just need to find the people no, who don't are not, are not despised. But there are going to be people who don't mind if you smoke. There are going to be people who don't mind if you eat your boogers. I just personally, that's just an aversion for me. But there's going right. to be somebody out there who eats their boogers too. You just got to find the the fellow booger eater. That's all. <laughs> yeah, that would be just the no. Um, my my advice to he or she would be, if you fix your annoying habits. Make yourself no. better. No. Or yourself. That is, no, don't listen. No. no. Improve okay. yourself. No, that's terrible advice. Do not. You you are who you are. If they're annoying habits in that, in that you're aggressive to your co-workers, that is not a habit. That's a personality trait. You know, a habit is like you burp too much or you sing badly but you sing anyway is a habit that is part of of the makeup of who you are you cannot change that the second you start to change that you get into a relationship with someone who's dating you but not the real you so in 10 years time you're going to resent that person and you know what's going to happen you're going to divorce that person but i know but my my my, my take or my spin is they're embar embarrassing annoying I, you're probably not happy with them improve yourself do, do it for you one, I got one more for this you. Is, this is Fiona's couch, and I'm. If you're listening okay. to, if you ever wrote that, that was terrible advice, and it is dependent on what the actual habit in a commas is. But don't listen to the solution. This is that's terrible advice. I got one more habit for you. Okay. Right, so this is like this. Guy, this guy's perfect, right? But he has Tourette's, <laughs> and every two minutes. He goes, fuck, and screams. Oh. Yeah, it could be weddings, funerals, work, family events. Um, no, that wouldn't put me off. There you go, to anyone out there with Tourette's. Yeah, definitely um, not. If you are ticking the boxes in every other box, mainly... And let me oh, be clear, he, it's not about it's not about being good looking. If you are self aware, if you've worked on yourself, he's you, ticking. He is ticking because he's got your head, so there's lots of ticking. <laughs> he's got ticks. Sorry, yeah, yeah. No, no. I, I was just gonna say, yeah, no, if you're ticking my, my the main boxes that I value, then a, a little bit of Tourette's wouldn't uh wouldn't push me away. <laughs> a little bit of Tourette's. <laughs> oh that's a that's a that's a tragic disease, that one, I must say. I really feel, feel for those people. Yeah. Um, but there's very inspiring stories of people who actually live with it and live healthy, successful lives. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Just like there is with every ailment. That's why that advice right. is terrible. You know, fix yourself. It's about, you know, using what you got, basically, and accepting that your habits and your intricacies are, are, are you and that, you know, unless they're causing somebody else harm. Oh, yeah, come on, let's be real. If you've got hygiene problems, just saw yourself, dude. Have a wash. 
It's the people. Do, Come on, you're people better. Who, but it's the people who don't think they have hygiene problems that have it. Not the, this guy who's self-aware or girl. Yeah. She's clearly self-aware. But it's the ones, oh, God, there's a stinker at my gym. Oh, my, it's, I, it's so eye-watering that I could be facing the opposite direction and I, can, I, can, I know when he walks in the gym, which is 100 metres away. No. Yes, it is eye, so eye-wateringly bad. It makes, yeah, it's absolutely Someone horrendous. Someone needs to tap him, man. I know. I see. I see other fellow because he's an older gentleman. I see other guys, and he's there every day. Um, I see other guys talking to him, and I just think to myself, "How are you even conversing with this person without blurting out?" Can I get you a stick of deodorant, mate? Like, I just. This is where you need like, you need like Larry David to go up and just say it. Do these people just not shower, or are they wearing the same clothes? Like, how do you get such a? I think it's the same clothes. It's often the same clothes, I'd Without guess. Without washing, with no washes yeah. in the paint. So I've just got my gym gym clothes. I'll just wear them every time. Yeah, it's it's yeah. it's it's awful, and I, I try not to. I just I physically just have to remove myself from the section. He's in. Okay. Yeah. So if the, if 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 this is the dude, oh, who's yeah. in, you definitely need to sort yourself oh, out. I thought you were going to say Buddy. if if Mr. Perfect stank like that. <laughs> No. Um, yeah. Hygiene, come on. Wash, your, oh, just yeah. wash yourself. Anyway, uh, big week in in football land and uh, Essendon land and uh, podcast land, I guess. So we'll be back with a podcast on Monday. Hopefully it's a successful win that we're talking about. Lots of great feedback, by the way, this week about the yes, forecast as well. You. So um, thanks to everyone that gave us terrific feedback and, uh, yeah, to all the trolls, keep it coming. Keep it coming. I love it. Um, but, yeah, on that note, to thanks him. to everyone. You that... can keep it coming to him. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, keep it, coming, keep it coming to me. And I won't respond to you except to correct your grammar errors. <laughs> I That's keep them to, though. Like, the, I don't have that many because I don't liaise with them. But... There's a couple, and I have them all. They're all in my drafts because I don't actually press send, but I'm so tempted I have to write it out. I have to write out. <laughs> Look, it's not that many, but in times past, there's been lots. And what I would do is I'd just, like, randomly, like, I'd just scroll and just laugh, but then almost just randomly pick someone and go with them. Um, but usually, I look, this is the – I honestly – this is not, not a word of a lie. I've never lost an argument to a troll. <laughs> Mainly <laughs> Who's <not> measuring, <laughs> who's by, measuring by, that? By, by the record. The, let the record show. But it's nothing to do with me or my intelligence. It's just that the people that react um, and come at you are generally just so just dim and so um, yeah. dim-witted that it's, it's easy. They can they barely stream they, they leave themselves wide open. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Someone yeah. like you, who's so eloquent and so intelligent, they just oh, they don't know. Oh, what no, to I, I wouldn't go that far. But that's just, you know, I'm punching down anyway. That's because but, you're, you're very level headed as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look. I mean, we did have. Um, we actually we actually have. We had one that almost grounded the podcast <laughs> this week. Yeah, we, yeah, we did have we did have a negative, one negative one, but I, I mean I did have one, and we've become like online Twitter friends, I guess you'd say. He's, 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 yeah, he's he's a really nice guy. Oh. But he there was one guy who did did threaten to find me, <laughs> to come and find me and and reveal reveal me and <laughs> maybe come and like confront me physically, oh. but then the next day he said he apologised. He said, "Hey, sorry, I was emotional," and I'm like, "Hey, dude, I get it." We're all emotional. We're all emotional. So that's yeah, self awareness. You fucked up, and you 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 know you come oh, to the party look, and you own up. Like that's love that. If you haven't made a mistake, you know, congratulations. Put your you're hand a liar. Up you. Yeah, exactly. All right. Mm-hmm. Well, on that note, thanks to everyone that listened. Check out something about cake. Uh, and we'll see you on Monday. See you guys. Ciao. Hill's got it. Tribute to the ground with a pulverizing tackle from Ambrose. Oh, I think the Bombers are going to go over the air. Bombers and Wales.